Hi, Phil the Bee Man here. I uh, follow up on my hop guard experiment where I applied some hop guard strips to hives last fall. We have a yard of 48 hives here and the ones on uh, this side of me were not treated with hop guard and the upside down lids are the dead ones and this is a weak one. So I got that as four dead and one weak on 32. On this side are the ones that did get the hop guard treatment and then they were mixed together in the uh, shed. Upside down lids, two dead and uh, no weak on, on 16. So that's exactly the same rate of, of fatality. And so at least uh, they did not cause harm to the bees. I think that was the first thing I wanted to know was if those strips would be harmful to the hives. That's why I did uh, a very s a limited number of, uh, in this experiment. The other thing we want to know is whether these were hard on the mites. And so we're going to do a shake test. And uh, so we've got my sample jar here. And I've, I've got one sample in here, a few bees from a hive that I found yesterday. I haven't shaken that yet, but we're going to go open, maybe we'll go four hives, uh, these two and maybe two from a little bit further back. And we'll sample some bees. So it's very important when you do this to take the sample uh, from hives that um, You want, you want to get the bees right from the center of the brood nest. That's where the mites like to hang out. You just grab some bees off the lid or from the entrance or something, you're probably not getting a fair test. So you want to make sure that you really are sampling uh, to, off of the brood frames themselves. So to do that, you first got to get into the hive. These hives have been out of their winter quarters for about five days, so the amount of brood in them is, is pretty limited. And so the uh, if there's a high population of mites, they'll still mostly be on the adult bees and diving into the brood as it starts to get capped up. So you want to once you're into the center of the hive, you want to make sure that you don't have a queen on the frame. And then you run that sample jar down the frame and the bees will kind of roll in there after it. Put the hive to back together just the way it was. one. These are the leftover strips. Uh, pretty much just cardboard at this point. Oh, this one's pretty weak. Be a good one to sample. So maybe there was one weak one here. You want to make sure when you're sampling, and I know I have a tendency to do this, of saying, oh, this hive's a little weak. I don't want to take any more bees away from it, but then you're biasing your test results if you do that. You only sample from strong hives. Uh, it sure make it a valiant effort. It's got capped brood here. Uh, we're going to boost this one as soon as we're... Oh, and there's our queen. Haha, don't make that mistake. So there she is there. So I'm going to take her and drop her down nice and safe over there. And then we'll sample here. Okay. And Dave will have to remember when we're done this to uh, give that hive a boost. So, uh, 
mark that with a sideways loop so we remember that. Okay. And I'll come back to uh, these two here. Actually, I'm going to do this one and that one. When we trusted these strips, we tried both uh, double treatment and single treatment. We put the double ones on the strong hives and the single treatments on the, the ones that were a little weaker last fall. These strong hives are still looking pretty good. Everything's still pretty cold. It's only, I think, about probably sitting here in the sun. It's maybe seven or eight degrees Celsius. Still pretty cool, and the wax is really stiff. So getting in is tricky, but it's a nice-looking hive. We'll get more to the middle here. I left my sample jar behind. <laughs> Be right back. I like to do this right over the hive so bees that do fall off and don't end up in the jar end up back in their hive. So I think that what we're learning here is that you can certainly leave that product in the hives over a pretty long winter. It's about six months since that was applied. And uh, I'm not seeing negative effects on the bees. These hives look pretty similar in quality to what we what we looked at with the earlier ones in the in the yard. Real nice strong colony, bees wall to wall. Again, I gotta get right to the middle. Do a quick scan for the queen. Don't see her. And I don't visually see any mites, but that really doesn't mean anything. Don't wait till you see mites to worry about them. By the time you're seeing mites, you probably have a 10 or 15% infection rate. And that hive is going down pretty soon. So you wanna you wanna rural mites are absolutely unforgiving. You gotta be on top of them all the time. I've lost hives over the years to them, sometimes very severely, and uh, I've learned to be pretty aggressive on controlling them. So now we're going to shake this sample jar. I'm just putting these blankets on top to keep everybody warm and happy while we do this. So the sample jar is got a screen glued between two lids on these two identical jars so that when I'm done shaking the mites will fall through that screen but the bees will not. And you gotta shake it pretty hard. I remember one time the provincial apers told me if you don't have wings and legs falling through the screen with the mites, you didn't shake it hard enough. So 
and sing happy birthday to yourself or whatever you need to do to make sure that you've taken a minute or two. But as long as you should wash your hands in COVID times and then we let the, the fluid and the mites fall through. And I see no mites. Oh wait. Oh. One. Floating right there. So that's pretty good. That's about probably about 200 bees. So if we got one, that's a half a percent or less. That certainly would allow bees to survive, which clearly they have. And because I'm stubborn, I'm going to shake a little bit more to see if I maybe wasn't patient enough. I don't see, I, I still see that one lonely mite there. So, I think uh, we, we applied those hop guard strips to hives that had, I forget, it was about two or three percent, two or three mites in a shake. Um, so I was, they would have had probably severe winter loss if we hadn't treated. So the fact that uh, we got, you know, looks like good mite control and good uh, survivability, I think uh, that's a treatment option that I'm probably going to try again. I'm not going to put it in the bank yet. I'm not going to count on it. Uh, but man, it's good to have tools that you know uh, work. So that's all I got to say about that. Have a great day, everyone.